Real Podcast, a podcast offering discussions and tutorials on nerdy subjects for people who aren't necessarily nerdy themselves. With you today is myself, your nerdy teacher, Georgia, with me here today, the mistress of giving, my mom. Oh, I like that. I tried. I thought about it for a while and I was like, no, mistress of giving, That's that fits with my mom perfectly. Why, thank you. Um, so this is a continuation off of last week's episode where we were talking about nerdy gifts that you can get. Yeah. And I think what we wanted to talk about a little bit more is some nerdy collectibles that you that you might consider getting in some of the um, inherent sort of items in that particular realm. Yeah. Uh, because, again, like we said last time, nerds love to show off their stuff. Um, again, I mean, I'm... I, while my mom can't see directly behind her all the time, like I have a, I have seen it though. I have a nice large collection of all sorts of stuff. I think one of my you favorite. Have, you have a set of shelves that is just there, to, I mean, like floor to ceiling shelves that is just there for for uh, collectibles. Collectibles, yes. yeah. Yes, admittingly, yes. It's um, yeah. It's hard to part with them sometimes. And and I should say it's actually two bookcases, decent sized bookcases. We have three bookcases. Oh, okay, sorry. So I have, I have three bookcases, and there's another one on the other side. Oh, over on the other side. Yes, you do. Yeah, that one's got more books on it than uh, collectibles, although there's it is an entire shelf that's just devoted to that kind of stuff. Yep. Um, but no, yeah, no, us nerds love our collectibles, and so I thought, you know, if you were in the gift-giving mood, a collectible might be something of interest. Absolutely. Um, and so the one I wanted to probably start off, which was probably the most common that you'll see out there, is the Funko Pop Vinyl Figures. Okay, so I have I have uh, Captain Marvel and a Flurkin on my desk, mm -hmm. and I have to say, um, because I have a very serious job and I deal with very serious people, they, they get comments, but I love them and I'm not taking them off. Comments as in, what the hell is that? <laughs> not so much Captain Marvel, but the Flurkin, of of course. Well, because the Flurkin. Which is a cat from which is the cat from Carpenter, Captain Marvel that like has like weird thing tentacle oh, elements coming it, out of its yeah, mouth. Yeah, no, it's a, it's 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 a tabby cat. It's a it's a standard tabby cat with with an octopus coming out of its mouth, basically. <laughs> so yeah, I'm sure that kid's, um I, yeah. I love it. Oh no, I I know you love it. it but I can see how that would get weird comments in your job occasionally from yeah, people who come yeah. in. But you don't get a lot of people that would come into your office, though, do you? No, I really don't. I, I get the occasional broker um, and uh, and my my boss. So I I work in a family wealth practice, and all we do is take care of one family's wealth. And there are twelve of us. It's a wealthy family. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, so my boss is pretty serious. Yeah, but I don't. But I think at a certain point here, like you, you know, like oh, they accept me. Oh, absolutely. I, I don't think you could get away with that if they didn't. At yeah. the end of the day, yeah. but I think you're in a very uh, lucky position to be able to be in that to have that kind of relationship with your boss. Exactly. So, um, I know in my particular location, I was I had some. I tried to keep my nerdiness to a minimum, mm -hmm. mostly because I didn't have a. Mostly because um, I didn't have a, my own desk for a long time. And so you couldn't really collect anything on a desk at all. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I was a self-professed nerd in, in, at work in a lot of cases in a hotel. So. Yeah. Uh, always made sure that when our nerdy conventions came around that I was like the big daddy that took care of everybody. It's so. a good thing. It's a good thing to have. Well, I find it's a... Well, especially when it comes to nerds. I mean, it's one of those things where... I, I I understand it from like three different points of view. I understand it from the guest point of view where like I've come to a nerdy convention and I'm going to be here at this nerdy convention. I'm cosplaying and I'm... I'm fully embracing my nerd. And fully embracing my nerd when I go to the convention. I've also seen it from the reservation side as well because when... Because for a year I helped with the reservation process for Anime Expo in Southern California in Los Angeles, which was one of the biggest uh, anime conventions in all of North America. And I was particularly with the customer service side because I told them like, "Hey, I'm a I'm a, I was a front desk agent at the time, yeah. So I know all about reservations and stuff like that." Yeah. And they were like, "Perfect, can we have you as customer service?" And I was like, "Sure, I can do that." So this comment of having all these customer service related calls and reminding people like to do X, Y, and Z was really helpful in that particular point. 
Yeah. But then I also know it from the manager point of view as well at a hotel in, a, in which it's like, I know these people don't, you know, to the average layman person, which is always, you know, it's you like... You have other guests. I have, well, uh, well, yes and no. It's a very funny, actually, there's a good story about that one time where I actually had a guest who didn't know anything was happening in the area and came for a, for a family weekend as a getaway weekend. <laughs> which group was there? Um, it was Fanime. It was Fanime. Okay. Um, Fanime's yeah. tamer than the furry. You know, I love how everyone says that, and if it's not, it's not it, truly it's, the case. It's not truly the case, but it feels less threatening. Yes, it does. Yeah, um, but like they, I, I love it when I, the furries come. Actually, I do too. I, I never. I always have to explain to people that furries are not weird. It's you know, it's weird to you, yes, but they're not. They're not malicious. They're not trying to be mean to you. Nobody's gonna be having like weird X-rated stuff in the middle of the lobby. So like relax if it's not your thing just look the other way they're not going to come bother you otherwise they're probably more afraid of you than you are of them yeah um there's a lot of things like that yeah but that we're like and again that's kind of i think part of the reason of the podcast was to be able to explain why this is out there and you know like because at the end of the day here like i know a lot of people who think of anime and think of oh that's you know cute girls being you know raped by tentacles <laughs> I which, love that. Which is which is what a lot of people think about it, and yeah. I, and I have to go about it in a lot of ways and explain to people like, no, anime is just like a different way of showing interesting concept and ideas. Yes, there is some tentacle raping happen. It's of like, it's a point oh oh one percent of yeah. the media though. Yeah. It's just, it, yes, is it weird? Yes, but were you ever going to see anything weird other elsewhere? No, um, and again, I've told people go watch the first two episodes of death note that's what anime is really that's what anime has the potential to truly be at the end of the day and those first two episodes of death note i can get somebody hooked on the entire series and all sorts of other stuff immediately thereafter because we haven't done death note well you we did we did for the first episode but it might be something right. to come back to because yeah. again it's definitely one of those things where um those first two episodes of the show are enough to get people hooked onto an entire series just to see what happens. Yep. Um, and I truly do think it's. I a, I, I I love the concept behind Death Note. Mm -hmm. Oh no! It's it's again just just the concept alone, and again I love just the fact that it's an animated medium, so you can do a whole lot more with it versus a a live action medium or something else of yep. that nature. So. Yeah. But back to collectibles. I'm um, sure there are Death Note collectibles. There are. Yes, the, I would the, the, not the notebook is very popular, actually. Oh, I bet. Um, so, but speaking of Funko Pops, so Funko is a is a vintage toy company in the sense that it primarily initially started as um, a guy named Mike Becker who really wanted the you know. Do you remember the big boy mascot for the I restaurant? I do. He wanted a coin bank uh, for the big boy mascot and found that there was no that you really couldn't get one online or anywhere that wasn't like a super expensive. It was yeah. not really affordable. So he basically created a company and licensed the big boy character so he can make a coin bank so he could have one himself. Um, but along the way they started, they tried to make like, they've, they've made like over like 20,000 different products after a certain point. Oh, there's everything. But, well, but before you get to like their bobble, their pop vinyl figures before that. Oh, before that, okay. Yeah, because they've, they've, they've tried a lot of different stuff, and they, they're they well-known, again, for um, their pop culture -esque sort of stuff at the end of the day. Um, they, the coin bank actually wasn't very popular, so the company nearly went bankrupt. Um, and then they actually started creating the bobbleheads of the Big Boy mascot, which was really popular. And they started doing bobbleheads of other characters like uh, the Grinch, Captain Crunch, and a couple other... Um, smaller stuff by 2005 it got sold to another guy called brian mariotti I, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm assuming he's his name and who really kind of took the bobblehead concept and started going nuts with it okay well let's pause here okay 2005 is only 15 years ago these things are everywhere yes in every character oh yeah. i have some as stocking stuffers this year i have i have a small collection i have a couple bigger bigger ones as well but like i have a very what I would consider a very moderate collection here, and 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 if you go to Fanime, mm -hmm. there are multiple booths. 
Oh, multiple booths that just have walls of characters. Yeah, you can you get... Know, that you can get just... And again, you can get just about anybody. And these are the pop bottom figures, which are the very popular style. The Very cartoony, very... Well, the, well, the initial intention was to be to mimic the uh, Japanese chibi style. So okay. chibi is kind of the super deformed, cutesy sort of look of things. Um, Koi. Uh, kawaii, yeah. Kawaii, sorry. Um, they tend to they tend to usually take anything that's usually kind of either hyper stylized or adult kind of figureish looking um, that would be in detail, and then shrink it down to what would be kind of a child sized look with a unnecessarily large head. head yes. By comparison, is the chibi kind of look, um, and then and then that was a that was a very much a stylistic sort of intention for that was to do that. Um, but no, like you were saying, yeah. There's it, it, you name a series. There's a there's a there's a pop final for it somewhere. Um, I, I would be hard pressed for you not to be able to collect. There's a BoJack Horseman. There's a, there's a there's a Dory that's ever so cute. Oh, how would you have Dory in a Funko figure? She's a little bit thinner with a little bit of uh, flappy arms on the side. It's very uh -huh. cute looking, actually. It, it's kind of it's kind of like looking at like um. No, I, okay, hold on. Oh yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm searching on my phone. Yeah, you'll she, post a picture, right? Yes, I have. Yes, I will uh, definitely put one on there. Um, but yeah, no, they're very, very popular. Um, at the end. How of do you there. spell Dory? Is it just an I? D o d o r y. But don't worry, I have it for you right here already. Or you're you're faster than I. Oh, it's so cute! <laughs> told you. I told you. I warned you. It, it was cute. That uh, is that is really cute. It's cute, and then but again, if you look, uh, but again, like they have the entire collection of them here too, as well. Um, that you kind of have to see. So they have there's a they, crab. They have the shark. They have the uh, Funko Pop. They have they have uh, Nemo. They have uh, Crush the Turtle. Bob. Again, yeah, like again, you name a series, and it's most likely um, a Funko Pop. They have passed it. away. They have Alex Trebek. He's selling hot right now. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I know, I know. I get, I get it. But yeah, so, so um, I don't think girlfriend listens to this. So um, I, I asked your brother, uh, uh, you know, what was girlfriend's fa uh, favorite. Uh, Disney princess, mm -hmm. bad boyfriend because he's been going out with her for two years. He should know, but um, uh, he he asked her, and um, I got a Funko Pop for her Christmas stocking. What is her, her favorite fa princess? What, what is her favorite princess? Mulan. Really? Which is a which is a cool princess to choose. It, it, is. it, it goes with her. She's she's a um, a master's student in uh, medical ethics. Mm -hmm. Interesting time for that. Oh, very. It would be very interesting right now, especially. Yeah. Um, uh, mine would be Belle. Oh, okay. that's an interesting choice, too. I like Belle because of the uh, literary nature and the um, sort of standout nature of her initial character at the end of the day. She stands out as kind of an odd and weird person to begin with in this world, but her oddness and uniqueness actually shines through and actually is a rewarding element to her that just makes her more likable at the end of the day. See, and I and I always like Belle's character because uh, she has the capacity to to love um, somebody who is atypical. She has no idea he's a prince. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely doesn't. Know. Yeah, doesn't know he's a prince. All she sees is just this monstrous exterior, and just hopes that there's something underneath that. Yeah, and yeah. And, and believes. Yeah, and, and, the... and fights for him. Mm -hmm. Fights to save him. So, so ex excellent, excellent choice. I tried. Yeah, uh, I'm a Rapunzel girl. Rapunzel's good. All that long hair, though. All that long hair. Yeah, you recently cut mine, but, um, but yeah, yeah. So there's, 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 you know, the, the long and short of this is there's everything in a Funko figure. Oh yeah, no. Yeah, they license them, and that's got, and and that's got to be expensive. Yeah. Um, well. Or do you want your figure in a Funko? I, I think it's kind of a mark of that you've made it at this point arrived, that, you, that yeah. you've arrived. I mean, like if you if you go back to like music musical career, like it used to be the deal that if Weird Al Yankovic wanted to make a spoof, your song. spoof your spoof of your song, like you had made it as a as a recording artist. Yeah, um, the same is very much true. I think of a lot of punk of of uh, uh, the pop finals at the end of the day. Yeah, because I really do think that like it's great marketing for your series. You know, you don't, you know, they're doing a lot of the heavy lifting for you at the end of the day, as far as the licensing goes. 
And it's a win-win on both sides because, again, like if you've got a super popular series, you've got fans clamoring for stuff at the at uh, at the end of the day. That licensing is going to pay itself back over time very easily in royalties at the bare minimum. Yeah. Well, and and, and here's the other thing is is even though it's not currently available directly from Funko, there's a hot market in them. Uh, on eBay. Oh, there's a hot market on eBay, various resellers, uh, different webs, almost every website I've ever, all the websites we visited here that we talked about last week all had Funko Pops at some point on there. And I have to say, in preparing, in preparing for, for this week's episode, mm-hmm. which, which I do some light prep as well, uh, although you do the heavy lifting on that one. Try. I just try to be mildly aware. Um, I'm all the more impressed with, um, Box lunch. Yes, again, I, I box lunch again. Even looking at it again today was is a very nice treasure trove. A little too heavy on the t-shirts, I think that they're trying to sell you. But like t-shirts are cheap. Yeah, but t-shirts are cheap and a dime a dozen, and there's like a billion of them out there. Yeah, you know. So I, I don't I don't blame them on it. It's a it's just Money the al- maker. It's the algorithm in a lot well, of cases yeah. too. And, and and that's probably true too. I just I I, I find their um, their site well organized. Oh, very much so. Yeah. So if you're given a Funko Pop, one of the things you definitely want to do is not to take them out of the box. Yeah, ask you about that. I don't. I so this this will come up a little bit later too when we talk of about. Of course, act- if you don't care about the box, again, eBay's your ticket because oh, there are yeah. a lot of used ones out there mm-hmm. for people who are selling them, um, and they they are without a box, and that lowers if they're with a box, especially if they're they're rare and already out of circulation. Oh yeah, yeah, and that, and that's really one of the things here with Funko, with the uh, Funko Pops at the end of the day is they really are a, um, they really are kind of a collector's market in the in the case of their rarity and their condition, um, condition also including the box in a lot of cases here as well because yeah, no, dent, they make, I I bought them discounted for dented box. Oh yeah, yeah, no yeah. dented boxes or scratch boxes or. Uh, you know, bent plastic in the um, on the boxing can make a big deal as far as its value. Because I'm not the, beyond giving you a discounted thing. I'm not. I'm. I'm just it, if it sits on a shelf really nicely, it's all I usually care about. Yeah. So so you so, know. Is, I mean, like if it's I'm, dead, I'm know, not that person. No. But again, some people are. At the end of the day, there are very collectory sort of people out there, um, which do have a you know which do pride themselves. On the condition condition of their stuff at the end yeah. of the day. In a yeah. lot of cases, the box also kind of presumes that it wasn't played with, although I don't know how you really play with Funko figures. They really are just... Keep in mind, like, a lot of the stuff we're going to talk about here today are purely collection items. You usually don't... usually sit yeah, them on a I shelf. Them, I, okay, so, so in my office, I also have a full-size mm-hmm. uh, Captain Marvel on a stand that looks like she's flying. Oh, yeah, no, a statue, yeah. And and people totally get that, mm-hmm. so 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 they have no problem associating me with Cap, you know why I would like Captain Marvel. So so, um, but um, the Flurkins what throws them off, but um, but I have a full size Captain Marvel on on my yep. desk too, yep. flying. A very nice Christmas present if I remember correctly. Yeah, she's she's what like eighteen inches or something. She's give tall. or take. Yeah, yeah. No. Um, so the last thing I wanted to talk about with Funko Pops, which might be a little <laughs> bit of a detriment here, is that did you know that some people don't like Funkos? Why? Okay, so that so that's one of the one objects that come in there a lot of times. So there's a couple. Uh, there's is a couple. Vinyl? Not not necessarily. There's a couple different reasons for what for for why in some cases. Um, sometimes some people find them a little bit disturbing. Um, keep in mind that all Funko Pops come with like these don't have like actual eyes. eyes they just have these solid white ball eyes um in a lot of oh, cases hold it here hold it here they have eyes some of them have like maybe like black spheres but most of them have white spheres for eyes oh i mean obviously doesn't bother me it doesn't it, it's not one of the things that bothers me either i typically find it to be in the uh the camp of stylization so Sometimes they have just like purely small little dot black eyes. Sometimes they're uh, oh, I see it. Yeah, white yeah. eyes at the end of the day. Like sometimes doesn't bother. Oh, the baby Yoda's really cute. <laughs> just saying. No, no. Pixar toys. Oh, there's Funko Harry Potter. Yes, there's Funko Harry Potter. Going back, going back to our previous uh, mm-hmm. 
Oh, the oh, Sven. The Funko Sven is really cute. Don't care for the Sp Funko F SpongeBob. There's a Donuts Funko. You know, there's that, food Funkos. You know, it wouldn't surprise me at a certain point. I mean, so like, if you if you had somebody who had a favorite food, you could get him a food Funko. I, I, I guess, wonder if there's a Pop Tart Funko. I, oh, I would imagine there would there might be one. Wow, there's a Kool Aid Funko. Oh gosh! I thought I'd done all my Christmas shopping. I guess oh I no 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 no! There there is a pop tart one. I found them right here for you. It's a toaster. Oh, gotta get the pop tart one for for your brother. Oh yeah. I send him pop tarts. I send him pop tarts in Cambodia when he's in the Peace Corps. Yeah, but pop tarts in Cambodia were like a rarity of existence at all. They they, they liked they they actually liked the uh, goldfish. I would imagine they would. They thought those were so funny, <laughs> and 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 he had three three uh, little little like sisters in in the house he lived in, and and uh, you would bribe them with goldfish, the the colored ones, ah, the rainbow ones. Those are rarities. Yeah. Um. So one of the so some of the time so again the white eyes are another thing that people don't like. Um. Some people find them too mainstream. At the end of the day, because they're oh, life is rough. I know. Or. Some people um, find them too mainstream, too cheaply made in a lot of cases, or too mass produced. Um, you know, which, which you know, can be can be a notion there. Um, some people consider them not to be true collectibles because they're so they're not for everybody. They're not for everybody. Um, there's some people who might consider themselves like true or professional collectors that don't want childish sort of uh, appearance, sort of of their of their collections. But, but okay, but if you're shopping for a nerd, that's not an issue. No, right? Typically not. I mean, like there's yeah. there's some people. There are some people I know who like see a Funko and they're like, oh, that's cool. It's like the low tier version of a collectible, but like that's still kind of cool. Okay. Um, you know, it it, it, it okay. it's, it's so I'm I'm back to is this is this a, a main gift? Maybe not. Depends on how you bundle it. Although mm -hmm. I have to say. I got Captain Marvel from one of you and the Flurkin from the other one. You gave me Captain Marvel Funko and a stuffed Flurkin. Mm -hmm. And one of your other brothers gave me the, the Flurkin Funko in the, in the same birthday. And mm -hmm. I was delighted. Um, we, 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 I planned that. Oh, you planned that. Okay. We didn't know. But, um, but you know is it a main gift maybe not is it a cool stocking stuffer or a cool side gift mm -hmm. acknowledging something that somebody likes i mean my my philosophy on gift giving is i can give you what you need and that's a lovely thing and i do mm -hmm. i'm giving somebody a huge tent for christmas but um not because they need to live in it just i want to make that clear okay because they like going camping and they moved away and so they won't have use of mine anymore true okay but um um, I'll give you something you need, but I'll always give you something you absolutely ha don't need, because a lot of times those are the gifts that people remember. You remember the things that people made an extra effort to to find, find out there for you. Yeah, no, yeah. I, got, I can. Uh, I was tickled one year when you got me um, the remasters of the Evangelion DVD collection, and those those are, those are something I watch once a year because it's one of my favorite anime of all time but like the remasters for it are just like so beautiful they have the original the original dubbing not the netflix dubbing which i have issues with um so netflix was able to get the original um neon genesis evangelion uh anime to be uh to get to be put up on Netflix at the end of the day. They also got the original Death and Oh, so now, so now you have another source for it. You have another source for it, yes. Um, however, when they brought it back, when they when they were when they brought it up there, they got a new company to do the dubbing and translation for it. Oh. And so what ended up happening was is that they didn't bring back any of the original cast um, at all. Um, and they've changed a couple of the contextual meanings of certain things in some cases. Um, so there's a lot of fans like myself who 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 see it on there and just like mm, I'm glad it's out there for people to watch it, but you're you're losing some of the stuff in the translation. Okay, but I'm, I'm going to take this a step back and say, if you're looking to buy gifts, mm -hmm. 
the biggest thing you can do is just be an eager listener. Oh yes, yes, absolutely. Again, because I mean, because the Evangelion came from being an eager listener. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think you and I had traveled together someplace, maybe. Well, maybe I, Guatemala I, or something. Yeah, either Guatemala or I mentioned it somewhere along the yeah. way. Um, but yeah, no, again, that's that, that was a great one there that I really liked. Um, and you've gotten me other really cool stuff over the years too. Um, that's kind of hard to remember immediately. That's oh, one yeah, that sticks no, no, out no. the most. I'm just, I'm just saying, well, I mean, I remember looking for, for the, the music from your Oh, yeah, favorite. no, yeah. yeah. Uh, that that was, like, I got that, and I was like, ooh, ooh. Yeah. And, that, and again, that sits in, in Big and, in Bo Big and, and Boys had... School stays in my car the entire time. Well, and how, how that came, came out was you had mentioned to me one time that you really liked this series, and one of the, the neat things about it was it, it had this beautiful music. Mm -hmm. And um, strength, uh, strength, which is there, which is the first song that comes up on there, which has this just amazing, you know, rocking backbeat and drums on there is is still my ringtone for a lot of people that call me all the time. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So, yeah. It's yeah. yeah. So that was something again it, where just definitely listening is a big deal. Yep. Um. All right. So moving on. Uh huh. I want to talk about statues. Or figu statues, figurines, however you really kind of want to describe it. Okay, describe so was, it. so so help me help me conceptualize this. Is is my Captain Marvel a statue? Yes. Okay. So when I when I talk about a statue, I'm usually talking about anything from a um, six to like fifteen foot, fifteen inch sort of figure. Sometimes it can be smaller or larger. Um, sometimes they're an action figure that's posable. Sometimes they're a static figure. At the end of the day, so that's what I really talk about when I talk about statues, and that's. Um, also might include a lot of stuff that are under six inches tall in a lot of cases. So, oh. um, so as an so, example, so what is the, what is the Nidorod? So, uh, Nindroid is Nindroid. a, so well, no, I mean, is that a statue? So yeah, so Nindroid would probably, I would, I would classify as a statue or action figure at the end of the day. I'm okay. classifying action figures in this as well. Okay. Um, mostly because once a person has, uh, an action figure out, they tend not to move it around a whole lot. Yeah. Stays in one place. Um, so. Um, as an example, let me get you one I have. Oh, he's beautiful. Now, now it, is this one you put together? Um, so this particular one is Megatron from he's Beast got, Wars. He's got the coolest clear, clear. Uh, that's not a wing. That's a, that, what Those is are it? wings. Those, Those are wings? Those are wings. They are really cool. And he's poseable. Oh yeah, no, he's he's a transformer. Oh, I yeah. like I like the dragon arms. Okay, he's cool. Yes, yeah, so I have a um, off-brand and not even one hundred percent accurate. This is actually kind of inaccurate to the original show, uh, Beast Wars Transmetal Two Megatron because I loved the original look of him and I love the fact that it's a dragon. It's kind of got yeah, this organic cool. sort of metal look, and yeah. one of his entire arms is just the dragon head. Yeah, that's uh, cool. One of the other fun things is that if you look at his face, he's got just the perfect smirk on him. He does. So, um, and this is, and so this is another example of what I would call an action figure at the end of the day. Um, but I really, there's kind of two levels of action figures out there um, for collectibles. There is okay. your uh, what I would consider your vintage action figure. Um, now, this is what was originally just meant to be a toy, uh, but for the collecting sort of audience here, it's all about um, trying to collect trying to collect something that you may have not been able to get before, or something you once had at a certain point. So, a lot of this is going to be um, like the original Teenage Mutant Ninja, Ninja Turtle toys. Um, I got your I got your brother one year for Christmas, the original Rock. Yes. From the wrestling rock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and again, that that's something that would be hard to find nowadays. He had one once. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know where. Um, GI Joe original GI Joe figurines, Barbies. Again, these are some of the more most collectible items out there in a lot of cases. Barbies. Oh yeah, Barbies, Cabbage Patch Kids, uh, Teddy Ruxpin. At one point, are still very collectible because a lot of it's about buying your childhood. Okay, so so in that line, mm -hmm. I have given you uh, um, the hungry spider or hungry caterpillar. Yes, they have. Very, they very have nice. this very nice plush of the hungry hungry caterpillar. 
Uh, he sits with my books because I want to believe that he's eating my books. Okay. And and I've given your sister, your sister used to love Madeline, and so I've given her Madeline figures. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I frequently do that. Yeah, and in a lot of cases, it's... it's uh, your brother has a, has a I love you this much bunny. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, yeah, because he likes rabbits. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so a lot of cases, it's about buying your childhood in a lot of uh, in a lot of that sense. So um, finding what your childhood was and then being able to say like, yeah, I've got all the original Kenner Star Wars figures. Um, or I got this, you know, really rare Barbie or something in that particular case. And so these are often, if you were going to find these, they are... They are a bit rarer um, when it really comes down to it at the end of the day when you're paying for it. In a lot of cases, you're often paying for um, how rare it is, um, if it has got if it has the original box or packaging that came with it, as well as any sort of um, extra things that originally came with it, like swords, guns, hats, purses, whatever might originally have come with it. Um, and then, obviously, condition. Because in a lot of cases, uh, parents weren't buying toys for their collecting sake, they were buying toys for their children to play with. Well, and, and in, in that light, it'll <coughs> sound like a completely different topic, but um, your sister has some of the original American Girl doll stuff mm -hmm. because it came first became popular when she was a little girl. Yep. And those original pieces from her American Girl doll set are actually worth quite a bit, mm -hmm. strangely enough. Yeah, and, even though American Girl doll is still around. Oh yeah, no, and there's a lot of stuff that are still around. Transformers are very, um, are very popular, especially Generation One Transformers. So, um, Optimus Prime, the original gun version of Megatron, which I always found to be an interesting toy to to have out there at the end of the day. Um, so some of those are still exceptionally collectible at the end of the day, um, uh, despite them being so old. Barbie is another example, you know, like. A 1950s or to a 1940s Barbie is very collectible. I, I actually one time went and looked to see the value. I had a a, a Mattel Twiggy, okay. which was which was like Barbie, um, you know, made the same way as Barbie was. But Twiggy, who was a Twiggy, was very popular. Most of you probably haven't heard of her. Um, she was a very popular model, um, London model in the 60s. That was the London look, mm -hmm. which is what we were all trying to copy, and. Um, and I went and looked to see how much she was. And if you still had her with her boots, um, she was worth a lot and made me very sad because I, she was worth literally hundreds. And I had one and, and gave it away. Uh, eh. uh, again, I mean, let's even go back to our original Legos where, like, you could sell a bin of our Legos for probably, like, thousands of dollars. I have bins and bins of those mm -hmm. Legos. Yeah. I'm not selling them. No. Thank you. But as as an adjunct to uh, to our our Lego session we did a couple of weeks ago on Etsy, there are several people who do um, uh, with three D printers Lego light switch plates and um, outlet plates. Yes. And how much fun is that? Oh, that's it's it's the coolest. Yeah. I've seen. I've actually bought um, keys that you can like door keys that you can get that have. Um, the tips of them that look like sword sc sword scabbards or sword or sword hilts, and then the rest of the key part you can get machined to look like a key, and then you that's what you plug into the door. So you could have like the boss key to open up a door or something, or a sword yeah. or something. It's, it's pretty cool. Oh, absolutely. Um, so those would be more um, vintage toys. Now those are not something you typically buy um, for a nerd unless you know that they're really into that particular element at the end of the day, or they have a collection of that. In that case, mm -hmm. um, it was a nice surprise to them in a lot of cases. Um, the other ones I would rec the other version of action figures I would recommend in a lot of cases are going to what do we call the premium action figures, and that's going to be one like Megatron here, who is um, now, now keep in mind Megatron here was about one hundred and fifty dollars online. I was going to say, and, okay, and, 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 and I was going to actually ask how how much is a because you can get you can get. For, you know, the the smaller like smaller figures. Funko, how much is a is a, a full price Funko? A uh, regular full price Funko will range you anywhere from eight to twelve bucks, maybe fifteen, um, if it's a more popular character. 
yeah. in the in the primary market, which is the sense that you're buying it either from a website, you're buying it from and they Funko do vary in price depending on whether or not they're licensed. Yeah, or or, or depending on the license as well. So I mean, yeah. like if, um, but if you're, I've noticed that, but if you go buy it on the secondary market or, or um, like eBay, at the end of the day, the price doesn't go way up, especially for um, stuff that's no longer being made at all. Yes. Um, so if you were looking for like a like a Ghostbusters pop final, those are tend to be. A, 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 well, I was looking for BoJack Horseman. Well, I mean, like, you, and you found him. I did. Which is the which is the hilarious part in general that you even just found him. I found him. So not a cheap date. No, I would imagine not. So, just saying. Yeah, um, but the premium action figures are kind of going to be in this area of. High detail, high, you know, good amount of articulation, you know, and again, I mean, like, look at him. He's a display piece. He is a display piece. Um, you know, I, I've had this now for probably. Now he's what, like 12 inches, but he's like 12 inches wide as well. And he's, he's like by 12 by 12 by like eight. So the wings actually have a span of up to 25 inches. Oh, <laughs> because right now they're down. But right now, but he's easily about like. 12 13 inches tall with his yeah. wing, with his wings even yeah. closed down um and the only reason his wings are closed down just so that way he can balance uh, so he can balance you can actually take the wings off i don't why know why would you it, want to yeah, yeah why would you um the wings even have uh yep. swords built into them now now what if you were to do to, oh that's so cool uh what if you were to do like kits because we did we did Gundam kits. Yeah, so model kits are I think are also kind of in that neighborhood of a of a premium of of kind of like a premium action figure at the end of the day. Um, again, um, of the Gundam uh, Gunpla model sets I think are great options um, at the end of the day, and they make them in a couple other they make it in other kind of mech series as well. So if you have somebody who's into a uh, a mech series, um, you know those are a popular one as well. Uh, one of my favorite ones has been uh, that I've been that I was actually really tickled to find when it was in Japan, because um, I know they only originate in Japan initially, uh -huh. uh, was the Star Wars um, Samurai. Very cool, so, yes. So, what yeah. I, so behind you I have a Samurai Stormtrooper. Yep. Um, and so a lot of them... And so, that, that is really cool, actually. Mm -hmm. and so they, they've, I've, seen the, I've seen a whole bunch of other ones uh, for... And they're primarily mostly the Sith. In a lot of cases, I've not yeah. seen any um, good guy samurai ones as well, uh, which has made me to try to try to think, figure out how can I make my own Star Wars inspired samurai armor of like Darth Vader or something, which I think would just be hilarious at the end of the day. Be pretty cool. Because um, the helmet so works for that. Oh, the oh, and again, a lot of that was based off of samurai armor when he was when George Lucas was making that. I mean. He was trying to think of how to, if Star Wars. What he was trying to make. He was trying to figure out how to mix, you know, a western with a samurai film at the end of the day, um, and just came up with sci-fi as well. He originally yeah. wanted to make uh, Flash Gordon at one point, but couldn't get the rights for it, so made yeah. Star Wars instead. Good, so, yeah. well, good call. Yeah. <laughs> bit of dead time so that way it's easy to find when I need to edit this later. Okay. Uh, oh. Perfect. So the next thing I would recommend if you have somebody who's into who's a nerd who loves Japanese animation um, but you don't feel like maybe getting them a whole big statue. Now again mm -hmm. now the figurine statues in a lot of cases can differ. Like some of them are as cheap as like thirty dollars, uh -huh. and some of them range pretty quickly into like. You said the, this is one fifty. So yeah, so Megatron here, which is a Transformer, I think they runs at about a hundred. Ran ran at about one hundred and fifty dollars originally. But he's fully movable. Well, he's fully movable, one hundred percent posable. Um, your static figurines uh, figures in some cases here um, are the statues here. Again, can range anywhere from thirty dollars, and I've seen them go up to a couple hundred th or a couple hundred dollars here in some cases. Yeah. So, um, I think the one that I have right now that's in a couple hundred dollar range uh, might be um, the white saber up there. Oh yeah, uh, with the with the petticoats. Yeah, 
uh, yeah. with the petticoats there, and then the other one that might be in that same it's range. Got a lot of detail. Yeah, and then again, that's going to be your thing with your figures is that it all depends on the quality and the amount of details that are in there. The amount of, I I noticed when I was looking for them online, it has to do with the amount of things that sort of fly. Yeah, I don't know how best to explain that, but if the hair flies out and is detailed and is free floating, mm -hmm. that drives the cost up. If there are parts of the costume, I'm making all these hand gestures like any any of you can see them. Um, if there are parts of the costume that are flying, if she's kind of fluttery, kind of effect to it, or yeah, kind of flowing if, in the if wind. whatever the figure is is twirling, mm -hmm. and there's a lot that takes flight, that adds to the cost of the figurine. Yes. Yeah, so just wanted to point that out. Yeah, so it's yeah, and and I think in this case here, a lot of the websites, especially eBay, will be your best bet for this. Yep. Uh, just because a lot of this, if you're especially into the figures, will be imports. A lot of it coming from from directly from Japan. Mm -hmm. um, but if you wanted something maybe a little bit smaller, what they have is what they uh, what they call um, what the company called Good Smile Company. That's mm -hmm. the literal name for it. It's just Good called Smile. Good Smile. Um, have uh, a series of t a series of action figures called Nendoroids. They're very cute. And so a Nendoroids um, are this chibi kind of variation of a character. Um, so they have a big very kind of kawaii. Big, very big head by comparison to their body. It's kind of like a their head's probably like a one, and the rest of the body's like a one point five kind of. Not in size. unlike the Funko. Not, not unlike the Funkos in a lot of cases. In fact, a lot of Funkos were originally based off of Nendroid, the uh, look at the end of the day, with the exaggerated head and proportion and styles here. Um, but what's interesting about the Nendroids is that they're all usually fully posable um, and come with either different bits of hair that you can kind of move around a little bit, depending on, again, like you said, like the wind or actually sort of stuff, and actually come with removable faces as well. So they have faces, uh, different faces and hands to have like, oh, they're giving high fives or, oh, they're kind of being hurt. Or and, you holding... can, and, these, and these are separate pieces that you can, you can pop on and off. Well, no, they all come in the, yeah, and then they all come with the same packaging. So they all, yeah. so the same character would have the same face on there in a lot of cases. Um, so let me, so a couple, uh, a couple examples I have here for you. Yeah. Um, and Nendroids tend to be um, a lot more prevalent in the anime community um as far as different characters go they come uh the good smile company comes out with like dozens of them every month or so um of different characters out there uh, some with limited more limited runs and some with more stuff on there um like as an example very stylized oh very stylized absolutely but uh, but they have very detailed eyes mm-hmm which is which is not untypical for the jet for the anime but unlike the funko which you said have one no of the eyes yeah yeah yeah, like it, at the end of the day here, like a Funko would be like a uh, would be like the very cheaper version of what would be a Nendoroid. So a Nendoroid, just think of much more detail and more. Well, I'll, stylized. Tell, I'll tell you what I think the difference is. A, a, a Funko is a very um, Western. Western version, yes. Western version, and um, and the Nendoroid is a very Japanese version. Oh, they have Harry Potter. Well, what does Harry Potter look like in a Nendoroid? Oh, okay. No, he looks very Western. Okay, yeah. That's a, that's a, that's interesting. Yeah, because I would have said that that was the difference was was that they they have a very um, um, a Western or Japanese Eastern Japanese Eastern. kind of aesthetic to it. Yeah. Um, well, keep in mind. I mean, like, okay, um, so, but the, that clearly looks. Yeah. Yeah, that's the Harry Potter right there. Yeah. Uh, and the two and some of the Nendoroids I have are actually um, Mercy and Tracer, which are from Overwatch, which is an American game by Blizzard, which is literally done right out of uh, Anaheim, California. Cool. Or so Cal or Southern California, oh, yeah. essentially. Um, and so it's not unusual for them to do other characters and other stuff in a lot of cases. Um, they tend to be, again, they're very popular as well. Um, an option here as far as um, the, sta the little statue, statue figurines look. Um, if you're into... And, and again, easy easy to find on eBay. Yeah, usually pretty easy to find on eBay. Now, again, I mean, um, in this case here, most sellers of these will typically, um, in, in Japan, um, the box is very important. Yeah. Because people like to, like to have the... But you can pay a pretty decent discount if you don't care about the box. Yes. Um, so, yeah, so that that's a big deal there, too. So, But a lot of people, um, if you find them out there, will usually be the brand new. So you can, or never opened in a lot of cases. 
So rarity will tef- typically come into effect on that on Nendoroids in a lot of cases. Yeah. Um, so the next thing I would probably recommend if you're interested um, is if you're into Nintendo characters or somebody's into Nintendo stuff, you can get Amiibos. I have several. And Amiibos, we've talked. I think we've talked about a little bit before where they are um, the characters from we the talked Nintendo about Mario. With yeah. Mario, yeah. So they're the Nintendo characters um, as little little statues that are probably no more than maybe like three or four inches tall. Um, but the intention is that for a lot of them, what you can do is you can um, put them on your device and you can usually get some sort of special reward out of them for certain games. Um, so as an example, if you have some of the mainline characters like um, Zelda, uh, Samus, Mario, they all have... Um, clothing option, new clothing uh, uh, options you can get for your um, Mario Kart or in Smash Brothers, they can become uh, save states for your characters. Um, in Zelda, for example, they have a number of different um, Link, Link, and Zelda themed um, amiibos, and so when they had Bre- with Breath of the Wild came out, you could connect all, you could literally. Um, Take, you could literally scan them into your switch and they would give you rewards so you could get like so- weapons or foods or in some cases a horse um, uh, so those were very those were very popular in that particular there are case. and I would just have to say because we haven't brought up animal crossing yet in this particular episode mm-hmm and we have to. Yes. Um, the, I have several uh, amiibos for Animal Crossing. I got you the llamas. Yeah, I have the llamas. Um, I have... Um, K.K. Slider. K.K. Slider. And then I have Tom. Oh, look. Yes. Nice. And he can go out of the store. Mm-hmm. Well, he's, he never leaves the store, typically. But the amiibo can go out of the store. Mm-hmm. And and to activate them, you just go to the the uh, the kiosk the in, kiosk in in the town yeah. hall. Yeah, and um and uh, so so they're they're pretty cool. Mm-hmm. No, oh, absolutely. Um, it's little. They're, sister- they're a figure. They're fig they're figures, and they're nice little collectibles. They have display stands for them. Um, um, I know my brother has. I think all of them, uh, or did it was collecting them at one point. He he gave me Tom. Yeah. Um, I got I, when we went to Japan. We got him Squirtle because Squirtle hadn't come out in the U.S. yet. Yeah. Um, so I thought he would he would be tickled by that um, to have something to add to his collection. Um, the little cousin to this, though, if you really wanted to, um, is they have a uh, Disney variant of this. Oh, really? Uh, and and one of the things we haven't talked about is the Zoom Zooms. Which are, are more a Disney thing. A more Disney thing, yeah. Um, so what they have out there is something called Disney Infinity. Um, now, it's defunct now, so it's may, it may be a little bit harder to get. Um, but what it was at one point was Disney figurines, not unlike Amiibo. Um, and you would get the game along with it, with it and scan them into the game. And you had basically what they considered a toy box. And so you could have like a toy box that was the um, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean world, as an example. And you could play as like Jack Sparrow or you could... Oh, really? Or you could... <laughs> add, or, or the other... So the, I the, like that. Or the other one that came can along I with... Can I be that weird witch? You could. Um, they did have different characters on there, but you yeah. also add like... Or if you wanted to play as Sully in the Pirates of the Caribbean world, you had that option as well. So they had a number of different character um, characters that you could. So you could take add the here. seagull from from. Uh, l- not all characters. Most of the characters. Ma- most of the main characters uh, they had a lot of those out there. Okay. Um. So like as an example, like they had Anna and Elsa were a pair you could get. You would scan them into the game, and you could actually have their world to play in. But you could also build up the world to kind of make it your own and unique sort of thing. So you said it's defunct now. Yeah, um, I don't know if they're still. Uh, they're not making the. They've discontinued the game because it wasn't a big selling seller okay. at the end of the day. So the, the 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 Disney Infinity elements might be a little bit harder to find. Okay. Um, but they're still out there, and um, if you still have like a Wii U or a PlayStation Three or an Xbox Three Sixty. 
Um, I'm pretty sure that they that those still exist out there to be able to um, do it, and they still sell it online through like Amazon and other places too that I'm aware of. Okay. So it's not as if they are um, gone, gone gone entirely. Yeah. But they do. But keep in mind that even the website for it doesn't truly exist anymore. Okay. So it's a defunct thing, but it's a cool collectible if you want it. If you if you like Disney related stuff. Um, cool, and, cool, cool. and then speaking of Zoom Zooms, which was actually an entirely an entire element on here as well, which was um, plushes. Um, so Zoom Zooms are these. They're <clears> both <throat> plush and plastic. They come both ways. They come both in plush and plastic. And different um, sizes. <clears throat> they have um, over six different sizes of them. Yeah. They range from. So, so in general, um, Zoom Zooms are Disney characters. But what if they were logs? <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I yeah. That's it. So, so, the, so, the, so I know like that doesn't sound quite the right way to phrase you it. You can stack them. Well, so that's where its name comes from. Oh, really? So in Japanese, the word sumi, uh, sumu, sumu, uh, means to stack. Oh, cool. Okay. So, so the entire intention of uh, of them was to be the stacking element, um, and so basically they're these Disney characters that are in the same vein of like. Very honestly, like of a Funko Pop almost in a lot of cases, yeah. with their with their white eyes and kind of very kind of basic sort of face look to them, but they're stretched out to a, like a log almost. So like they look like they're long and narrow. They're long and narrow, and so um, they have they're kind of like a almost like a pillowish in some cases. If you get like yeah. the plush version, yeah, um, that there's a face on one side and then there's kind of like a log body that goes along with the it. body has very little detail on it, no real legs, just just it'll have they'll have like little arms tucked up underneath, Under, the, underneath, underneath the face and there are like little legs in the back but they're very there's really no body there's no descript body to them it's just sort of a mass yes um and again and they come in just about every disney franchise that's out there including star wars and marvel your, your sister-in-law has easily 200 of them oh yeah oh yeah she was collecting them for a long time yep I remember going to like a Target with her, and she's like, "Oh, we got to go to the toy section real quickly." He's like, "Yeah, I love toys. I got to go check and see if they have any zooms I don't already have." I was like, "How would you know if you don't have them or not?" Oh, she knows. Even I accidentally bought two Doctor Strange Funkos. We we well yeah, Doctor Strange, interesting. Oh, um, oh that that that's my Marvel character. Well, you no, know, um, last year or the year before, I got the girls' advent calendars mm -hmm. that were was all Zoom figures. Mm -hmm. um, the, all Disney Zoom fi Zoom figures. It was you know Mickey Mouse and Daisy Duck, and yep. and they um, had pieces that could go on them, like a wreath that could go around the head, or like a headband that could go on the Zoom figure. Oh, one of the fun ones I got was um, I know they're so I got a Zoom of Star Wars characters. They're all like lip balm sort of things. So they all stack on one another. You already have those? No, no. You, so you, you're the one who gave me them. Oh, I didn't remember that I gave them to you. So. <laughs> you're getting more. Oh, cool. Um, oh, awesome. Cool. <laughs> it's good. It's lip smacker. It's, it's good stuff. Yeah. Um, so the traditional zooms come in a couple different uh, sizes. You have uh, micro, which are about uh, two inches wide. Not even. I, I. Did you see the little one, the so, little Elsa? So, the, so the, yeah, the little, very, the little Elsa is not even an inch wide. Yeah, she's so, itty bitty. So, um, so these are mostly the plush ones, though. Oh, the plush ones. So okay. the plush ones, and then you have uh, the the original mini, which is about three and a half inches. Um, mm -hmm. Those are kind of the more ones you would find at the at the toy store for like maybe like. Four or five, maybe six bucks yeah, a pop. Yeah, these are these are inexpensive, and and then and then I'm going to introduce you to a different a different way to look at figures too. Go Ooh, ahead. Okay. Um, then you have your small ones, which are about seven and a half inches uh, mm -hmm. in length. Um, your medium, which are eleven inches. Your large, which are seventeen inches, and then you have your mega at twenty one point five inches. So, jeez, um, that's a that's a pillow. Yeah. Again, like I said, they're pillows in some cases. Uh -huh. That's a um, and yeah, and then the idea is you stack them on top of one another. She literally, so so Amanda literally has a frame, a, mm -hmm. one of the three D wide frames you can get at Michaels, like like it's like four inches wide. Yep. And she has them stacked, crammed into that frame. Mm -hmm. I mean, and the frame's got to be like twenty by thirty. E easily. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's it, it's a thing. Oh, I was gonna say it was probably bigger. I was gonna say it was probably almost like. Might be bigger. 
might be bigger. Yeah, no, but it's a yeah. But she's got a nice, worthy collection inside there. She does. Um, will you under? Will you imagine though that the only reason that these plusters exist was because of a game? Oh, really? So there's um, and and Amanda plays it as well. It's a game. Um, so in Japan, they you just don't, tell how nerdy this family is. It is. It's a very nerdy family. Um, in Japan, um, they have a messenger service. Uh, called Line, which is kind of the more popular kind of messenger service out there okay. in in Japan. It'd be um, it'd be analogous to like Facebook Messenger okay. or um, or Twitter in a lot of cases, um, which does exist. It was very still also very popular in Japan as well as the Twitters. Uh, but Line is a very popular uh, communication tool, <clears throat> and they came out with um, with a game called Disney Zoom Zoom. Which is basically just like the front faces of the characters. Uh huh. You line them up to remove them, and more drop in from the top. Like bejeweled. It's similar to bejeweled, but like they arrange in a very non, in a very organic way, where bejeweled would have it all in a grid form. Uh huh. These guys kind of like fall in gravity style, so they kind of okay. like so they stack onto each other. Um, Tetris. In, in, not Tetris, but in kind of like okay. a like you would like a bunch of pillows. Okay. There's like uneven gap space in between them. Oh, okay. Um, and the idea is again is to get a whole bunch of them in a row, remove them to get access to more of them to get like bigger chunks of it, and you get more points and awards for it. The game's primarily designed around collecting more Zoom Zoom characters that you can have in your collection instead. So uh-huh. if you just wanted to play with Disney princesses, you could. If you wanted to play with all the bad guys, you could. Stuff like that. Okay. A very popular game. Other version, other variants of this game have come out as well. There's a there is a Pokemon version of it as well, because of course there are Pokemon Zoom Zooms. Of course. Um, and keep in mind that like Zoom Zooms are primarily a Japanese or primarily a Disney element. Yeah, I've only really seen them in Disney because they used to buy the plastic ones um, for the girls in the like little three packs. Mm-hmm. Yep. But there are another slight variant to that as well. Okay. So there are, um, and I will butcher the naming for this. It's called a. Nezo Betty. <laughs> okay. Um, and so Nezo Betty is a very similar to a Zoom Zoom at the end of the day. Uh-huh. Um, the main primary difference in this is that um, the heads are a lot bigger and it's not really stackable. Um, let me show you an let me show you an example here real quick. Because the Zoom Zooms are oh yeah, that's not stackable. It's cute though. It's very cute. Yeah. So these are become a lot more popular. They're based off of. Um, I don't know if this is the official name for it at the end of the day, but um, Sega has a... So, Sega, the company we know as the Sega Genesis and the Dreamcast yeah. and as, as a video game creator, um, is actually much more popular as, as arcade cabinets and arcade functions at the end of the day. That's what they originally were, were known for. Well, and, and understand that in, in um, Japan and also in Taiwan, when, when we went to Taiwan, there are video arcades everywhere and we're not talking arcades like like we have in the u.s we're talking about hardcore multi-level well, buildings with like nothing full but massive display sort crammed, of arcade. crammed in there mm-hmm. oh yeah and, no. and, and loaded with people um and crane games are actually a very very popular thing in japan in, they, in these they arcades are, they are they are in taiwan as well um, as a matter of fact, we had we had laughed because um, we were with a guide and and uh, there were a bunch of school kids uh, coming out of one of them and apparently the guy the guide started laughing and I looked at him and he said oh the, he said the kid just said 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 I don't know why I do that I'm just giving away my money. Pretty much, I mean, like it, nothing wrong with these with the, um, these guys. I think are actually pretty cool at the end of the day um, because they come in various characters. Um, Throughout, they come in all sorts of different anime characters, um, primarily the girls, from what I've seen. Although um, that's true of a lot of the figures, though. Yeah, I think I think I think that's more or less um, just an element. Although I have a really cool Jafar zoom, zoom 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 in. Yeah, yeah. I was looking at I was looking doing my research for it yesterday. And I was like, oh, they have Gaston. Oh, I hope they have a bigger Gaston. He's pretty. Cool. I don't know. I like Gaston for some reason because he's just a. An asshole. Oh, he's a, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean. That. Oh, he's, he's the per. He's but yeah, but he's like the perfect kind of asshole at the end of the day because like 
he's not he's not he's not wrong um, but but you can see with the with these guys here that they're very similar to Funkos in a lot of cases. They are a bunch of those just have circle eyes. Just have circular eyes. Um, yeah. They have little itty bitty bodies that are kind of you know well made up. They have yeah. you know a lot of them have um, school uniforms if their school characters have like the little skirts and everything. And, yeah. Um, you have an entire um, series of idol girls which are all kind of like all stacked on top of one another. Yeah. So they are stackable at the end of the day. They're just not naturally stackable. You have to pyramid them. Yeah, you yeah, you would have to pyramid them and their bodies. Um, by by which I mean offset. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but again, very, very cute alternative here as well. Um, I have two of them, one of which is my only favorite idol girl, uh, Yu Watanabe, and then obviously I have Saber, because of course I do. Of course you do. Um uh, what was the another fun one here, which could be actually kind of unique here? So this is not a common one you'll fa- you'll find very often. Um, I want to talk about X rays. X rays. So um, I don't know if this is the official name for it here. So there is an artist uh, by the name of Jason Freeney. Um, he's an American pop culture surrealist artist, and um, what he's well known for was he is he took. He said he's made cutaways of characters that show their inner skeleton. Oh. So I have a... Now, how expensive are these? Um, so the x-rays... Because is, they're sounding more expensive. So this, they, they're a little bit... So um, let me see. I have, uh, I have a... So I, 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 before we got here, and I, had, I went to grab pictures because I knew it would be a little hard to immediately describe. Oh, I, I have seen these. I mean, we're looking at Bert and Ernie. Um, half clothed and half skeleton. Yeah, and so you know, I, you know, if you had somebody who was a doctor or becoming a doctor, and you knew what their favorite character was, that'd be pretty cute. I think Mark has one that's a balloon animal dog. He does have somebody because he does balloon animals. Yeah, so he yeah. so he does balloon animals. One of them is a balloon animal dog with half of it being yeah, he uh, does a skele- being the organic skeleton on the yeah. inside of what would be a hot dog dog. Yep. Yeah. Um, Again, I don't know if this is the official name for it. There is a company that makes these. It's called that licenses them under X-ray. At the end of the day, uh huh. They get sold out very quickly because they're very highly collectible. At the end of the day, um, okay. So, so I'm looking this up. Um, okay, so I want to save this because I wanted to ask you about this when we're when, when we're when we're done. Um, so they're done by by a company that's called Mighty Jacks Dot Rocks, which is um which is where I found the naming for them. Because I knew they existed, I just didn't know what the what the official name for it is. And maybe that's not even the official name, but that is just the ones that, that I've seen out there. And they've had, they have um, different, they have like, so. What's they, the company again? It's called Mighty Jacks. And again, we'll have the link on our uh, website as well. Uh, but they have Garfield is literally one that's coming out. They're about $150, I want to say, give or take, depending on it. Gives you a lot of detail. Yeah, so they have a yeah. couple different anime so characters. So not a cheap date, but but still fun. Yeah. Um, That's pretty cool. Yeah, so they have had a, they have a couple different variations on their website. Bugs, Bugs Bunny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, there's Bugs Bunny, Mickey Dissected. Mouse. Uh, I've seen Superman as well and a couple other characters. There's Tweety Bird. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of different... Um, so, again... I don't know if this is the official name for it at the end of the day. It's just the one set of guys I saw that were selling it with their name on it. Um, but this kind of stuff, it does. Pinocchio. Mm-hmm, yeah, so this does exist out there. And a lot of the a lot of the ones that you see on there might actually be originally Jason Freeney's original art as well. Well, I mean, and actually what's interesting is that if, if you wanted to get the Lego Man version of it, which is really cute, he's, he's $26 on Amazon. Yeah. Yeah, so some yeah, so some of this yeah, is somebody available. who was really into into they really vary price wise. Okay. Yeah, so they can. And again, and again that's Ronald all Ronald McDonald. Mm-hmm. I've seen a couple of them for Sponge like Bob. Batman and Superman are in there as well, I've seen. Um so yeah, so this is definitely um this is a kind of a cool idea, especially if you know somebody who's who's got who's got These a, are pretty cute. There's some really unexpected ones. Mm-hmm. So yeah, especially if you were able to find somebody who's like big into like you know, one of these characters. I'm like, if you had somebody who really liked Bob's Burger, you could get Bob's Burger. You could get the Bob's Burger guy at the end of the day, you know, or Bob. <laughs> What'd you find? 
okay. Made by the same company. Oh yeah, that's yeah. uh. It's that's a pair of right. balloon dogs. Um, Humping one another. Yes. Didn't know quite how to say that. Oh, well, okay. That's, I'll just say it. Yeah. Yep. I always appreciate that about you. I mean, we are meant for for adults. Yes. And yeah. We're not an adult rated sort of thing, but we are intended for adult adult yep. demographics. So. Yep. Um, so yeah, I thought that was kind of a cool gift, especially that is, if you were able and, to find it. And they it. vary they vary in price, so it depends on what on what you're getting mm -hmm. or what you're looking for at the because, end. Because because the the, the the Lego guy's actually pretty cool. Oh yeah, no, very cool. Especially if you have somebody who's really into Lego. Yeah. Um, the other thing I thought was a kind of a cool thing you could you could give if you wanted to. Um, I would recommend a movie prop replica. Oh, that actually is cool. So there's two. So again, so you, you I, I'm I'm assuming you know as as I sit here, I'm looking at um, the glove. I have I have the Infinity Gauntlet, both the yeah. um, Infinity War and Endgame variants of it. Yep. Um, and then I also have Thor's hammer as well. Yep. Um, and Thor's hammer is really also very cool. Both of them, all of those done by um, has a watched Marvel... Thor Ragnarok recently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, actually, yesterday for work we had a trivia contest that was Marvel, and I won it. Oh, of course. So. Very cool. Um, but no, yeah. So sometimes a cool movie collectible um, or a prop from a TV show or something is actually kind of a pretty cool thing to get for some for people. Now, obviously. The cost of this is going to vary dramatically in some cases. So a lot of the Marvel stuff was in about uh, right around eighty to a hundred dollar range in a lot of cases. So like Thor's hammer was like eighty. Yeah. Each one of the gloves because they'll have it articulating fingers and light up yeah. and everything are about a hundred and ten each. Okay. Um, but those are kind of cool idea gifts. So they Marvel and, and we're all talking about the officially licensed stuff as well. Yeah. Um, so these are replicas at the end of the day. They're not the but originals. But you could go on Etsy. Yes, yeah, so that was my other thing. So Etsy has a couple different variations on here. So um, when, so as an example here, one of the things I was looking at is that you could actually get the actual movie props as well. You so, can get the real ones. So you can get the real ones. A lot of them go through auctions in a lot of cases. Um, so as an example here, Prop Store um, is the premier sort of auctioning sort of element on there. Um, they have one coming up here in December, um, the first and second. One of the items that they're auctioning off is a is the um, Obi Wan Kenobi lightsaber. Oh wow! And keep in mind though, it starts at four forty thousand pounds, and is expected yeah. to go from anywhere from eighty to one hundred and twenty thousand pounds, which roughly equates to about one hundred and sixty thousand dollars oh, US. Yeah. yeah. Um, so a lot of the stuff is very expensive <laughs> over there uh, that that you can get on there. Uh, as an example, one of the items I was looking at is that, do you remember The Mummy? I do. Because I'm sure it plays on either TBS or USA. In, All the time. Yeah. So what I saw in there is Fast that... Fast and Furious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there's, a, there's a rotation. <laughs> because they're cheap, they're cheap to license at yeah. the end of the day. Um, so there's the Book of the Dead that mm -hmm. I saw in there, like the original replica for it, which is going into auction. And I was like, I was curious, and I looked up on Etsy. You could get a Book of the Dead with the key for like four hundred fifty bucks. Well, I mean, it's, so it's a three D printed, and it actually—I was going to say, yeah—it opens up and everything on it. And if you wanted to, you could do a lot of weathering to that to make it seem older looking, most likely. Um, but it was, but it was, again, it's a three D printed, beautifully designed. It, it, it the key actually opens up. You know, you actually have to turn the key to actually open up. To open up the book, it was really well done, and there's a lot of props on Etsy that you can that you can get on there. Again, I mean, we got a lot of our cosplay stuff for there, and a lot of that is kind of meant for cosplay if you were going to do it on there. So I, I would highly recommend um, to look out there to see if it exists um, as a licensed version first, obviously, um, because we want. To, I mean, at the end of the day, we really want to support the people who. Who these yeah. companies at the end of the day? Because we don't support them, then they don't continue to make it. It's one of the reasons why I still, even though I don't watch a lot of it as much anymore, like I still support wrestling at the end of the day by having a membership to their uh, to their um, streaming, streaming service. service yeah. Um, and I'll watch it for the big pay per views and some of the big kind of behind the scenes WrestleMania. stuff. WrestleMania. Yep, WrestleMania. Um, but like I don't wa admittedly watch a lot of wrestling at this at this time right now. I follow it fairly frequently, but I don't watch a lot of it. Um, 
but again, if we don't support it, it doesn't exist at yeah. the end of the day. Yeah. And so it's like, it's like paying paying for licensed music. Yeah. Um, it, again, if you don't I, at this point, I'm really close to getting YouTube Red, um, which is the service so you just can skip the ads. Mm-hmm. Um, if only just because I want to just skip the ads. But like yeah. at the same time, I, I watch a lot of YouTube. It's like I, I could support this. You know, if five to ten bucks a month is not the end of the world. Uh, but again, if we don't support these kind of things, they don't. We don't know. You know, they don't get the chance to exist. But again, your ability to support something is at your willingness. At the end of the day, there's a lot of people who don't have the ability to. To it's a, it's to a financial decision. Mm-hmm. And and one that you shouldn't make lightly just because you think you need to be a, a good person or something. At the end of the day, you well, should. Well, I, I donate to Wikipedia. Oh, I donated to Wikipedia too. Because, because quite frankly, I, I use Wikipedia. I appreciate that it's there, mm-hmm. and I can't expect it to be. And it has no ads. No, it has and, no ads. And, and and if I'm not willing to support it, then then, then I shouldn't use it. Absolutely, you know. And I I support it whenever they do out there. I usually always yep. either give like five or ten dollars. Yep. Typically. Um, Speaking of things I supported this week, by the way, I made oh. a donation to to Child's Play. Oh yes. Yeah, so. Um, when this is so right we now we're talking about when this is over because because I have. I have a couple of things too on our topic. Ooh, even better. Okay. Um, the next set of items I would probably recommend, which are a little bit more vague in a lot of cases, I would say accessories. Oh. Because. <clears throat> I have Captain Marvel earrings. And a necklace. And a necklace. Yeah, and that's one of those. Um, so I have a little bit more difficulty speaking on this because I don't wear a lot of nerdy things outside of t-shirts. Um, and Your brother has a, a BoJack Horseman tie that he loves. I would not, that would not surprise me. Just say it. Oh, yeah. Um, again, in my previous life, like, I had, a, I have nerdy ties. I just, I can't wear them to work because you have to be professional. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. Darn, darn professional work. Um, but my current job, I don't have to wear a tie anymore. That's kind of nice. Yeah, but I kind of miss it at the same time, too. Like, it felt like, like, I rip off the tie at the end of the day. It's like, I am done with work. And off well, my, my thing my thing with, with ties, um, and, and in my experience, because I deal with architects, mm-hmm. architects have the best ties. I would imagine. And it makes sense. But um, uh, it's it's men's version of, of uh, costume jewelry. Yes. Cufflinks are the same thing, too, with that. Yep. And, 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 and quite frankly, architects have the best cufflinks, too. Oh, yeah. And again, keep in mind, like, <laughs> they, they have conflicts they just... and all sorts of cool designs, too. Yeah, because they're into the detail. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but no, so in the case of, like, you know, and, and again, like, I have seen... So, again, like, if you go to, like, Lunchbox here at the end of the day, you'll have an entire collection of women's earrings, rings, bracelets, necklaces. You could wonder a woman a girl out. Or you could Sailor Moon them out. You can yeah. just about anything. Yeah. And there's, it's not... I've seen a number of Batman stuff or Superman stuff out there as well. Um, it's an option here as well. Um, do you remember my um, my pillow from World of Warcraft? Yeah. So these are these little micro versions, chibi versions or Funko versions of their various characters from the franchise. They have that in prints for handbags, purses, wallets, backpacks, um, which is a whole line that they have on... Their website you could buy from on Blizzard.com as an example. Um, and I know that they it is an example. I know they have Animal Crossing purses and handbags um, that I thought would probably be a little too much. I had a whole Animal Crossing birthday. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my children gave me a, an ensemble of uh, Animal Crossing things, including a mug that says that has Tom Nook that says "Bitch, better have my bells." <laughs> <laughs> which is which is a, a play on a uh, Ariana Grande song. Oh, I thought it was Rihanna. Oh, is it Rihanna? Okay, you're I right. It's, I think it's, it's Rihanna. Rihanna. Yeah. Okay, so so it's a play on a Rihanna song. Um, it's but it says "Bitch, better have my bells," mm-hmm. and and I love that mug. Um, and it, and it was a, a the gift was it had a an Animal Crossing shirt, mm-hmm. and uh, the "Bitch, better have my bells," and the the Tom Nook amiibo. And um, and a, a carrying case for and your... a carrying case for my switch, mm-hmm. and it's just cute as anything. And that was a really nice sort of put together gift that that they did. Cute. Yeah, he's I, winking. I I helped a little bit with that. Yeah. So because um, he didn't know what to get, he really yeah. honestly didn't. 
No, it was it. So that was that was really a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, so there's neat kind of accessories like that yeah, that yeah. are kind of sly ways of kind of having your nerdiness and not being. Uh, there were also stickers for laptops and. Um, oh, that's, and 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 absolutely. there's phone cases. I mean, if, so if you wanted if you wanted to go in on something like that, you could you could. Because putting stickers on your laptop's a thing right now. Yeah, so at work, so I, I'm a big person of not defacing your 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 yep. electronics, if only just yep. because I find that um, at some point here I will sell my electronics to somebody else, or I will yeah. gift them to somebody else, and I typically don't want to. You have gifted them very kindly to to siblings. Yes, um, but and I want to give it to people. If I give it to somebody, I don't want it to have. I don't want it to be this element of like. Oh, what's this weird thing on here? Oh, that was my brother. He was weird, but he gifted this to me sort of element. I want it to be kind of like a... Your siblings have no such compunction. If you looked at their laptops, there are all sorts of things on them. Yeah, no, I, I know my... Um, I know I have... Um, yeah, I know they. I know they have absolutely defaced all their electronics as much as possible to make <laughs> to make sure it's theirs at the end of the day. Which yeah. is a, which? Yeah, which is a, which is a strategy as well. Which is a very good strategy at the end of the day for them, because um, yeah. I, you know, if it, at work because we all have the exact same HP laptop. Um, we just hired. So there was a new guy that got hired this week that I'm going to be training, and we just got his laptop yesterday when I deliver. Uh, I delivered him his laptop. My first, my first thing to tell him when I when I gave him his laptop, okay, you need to deface this laptop immediately. Mark it, mark it somehow so you know it's yours. Yes, because again, there are so find look the same. Find some sort of sticker, some find some sort of item on there that you can put on there. Same thing with your backpack. Um, so obviously, my backpack has a little saber uh, keychain uh, charm on it, um, and my laptop has a uh, silhouette of saber on it as well. Very good. Because again, that's that's my that's my wife, that's my girl. Yeah. Um, and so that way, I know it's my laptop whenever I'm out and about. I know that you yeah. know nobody nobody second guesses that it's mine at the end of the day. Um, and that you know, and again, there's a market in out there for stickers. I was remember I had a guy who worked in valet who kept telling me about like, yo man, have you checked my website lately? I got like all these brand new stickers out there, and I was thinking like. Really, stickers? There, there. Are, but that's a, but it's a market. It's, you can it's have and you there. can have stickers custom printed as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I have had. Um, there's there are several people on Etsy who will do you nice die cut. Oh yeah. Um, or they do you quality. patches as well if you wanted to. So I, um, I have another friend at work who has. So we all have vests at work, mm -hmm. and his vest has a number of military s looking patches that are actually just anime patches at the end of the day. That's cute. And so they're so like I've been I was looking at those for a couple of days. Those are all over Etsy as well. Yeah. Etsy's a good place to find a lot of the stuff at, especially um the other one I Although I have an embroidery machine, so if you you know I know. Okay. Um but yeah, I mean like handbags or accessories in that particular nature are, are a fun one. Um I don't will say that there's a lot of people who don't like to or don't want to make their nerdiness overt. Um and by that I mean that they generally don't like to um, call it out, call it out, or be out and proud over it and stuff. Like they want to be a little I more like that. Well, I mean, like there's a lot of <laughs> subtle, there's there's it. some subtlety to it at the end of the yeah, day. I there mean, is. Like, you don't you don't want it to be not um, in your face. It's one of the reasons why I didn't have a lot of it at work at all, just because when I did have my own desk, I was yeah. really kind of a point of just saying like, you know, it's not like the most overwhelming thing because I've seen people who have like. The national, you know, have a you know a big soccer jersey up on their wall and have their entire offices kitted out in some sort of elements or something. And I'm, and I have my little desk, and I was just like, it's a little itty bitty thing because I don't. I know professionals would come up there and would look around and be like, who's that one guy with a bunch of cartoon stuff on his desk? I've got That's travel weird. pictures all over my office. Yeah, but and the pictures of you guys. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, but travel pictures are very cool at the end of the day. Oh, that's true. Um, and they have, and they're way, and they're, and they're good, great gateways to stories at the end of the day. Yes, they are. Versus if I have this weird nerdy thing in my desk, it's like, what on earth is that? Right, and then, I, you, and then you have to, then you have. To, well, then, that's the response I get, get uh, again to the flirt. Yeah, and then, then it's automatically this notion of like, it's almost as if you're defending your nerdiest nerdiness a little bit. You yeah. have to defend yourself. So there are some people that try to be a little more stealthy about it. So again, like that's why I think like having. Um, 
like a like a women's wallet might be a good option at the end of the day or um some sort of like tote accessory in a bag might be a good way of, of having a little bit of nerdiness without being Even a shopping bag you yeah. get the shopping totes that are pretty mm-hmm. cool oh yeah um I would uh, the other kind of cool stuff again. A lot of this I would, is, we're talking about Etsy here would probably be um, uh, housing accessories as well. So like, I like pillows at the end of the day because I think they make cool little um, ensemble elements for yeah. for a couch. That's like a nice little way of stating or claiming your nerdiness out yeah. there. Um, I know some people who have like waste basket baskets or. Um, you know, cooking utensils or cooking plates or, or silverware that are nerdy inspired inspired yeah. as well. Um, I also highly recommend the traditional artwork on a wall. Yep. Nothing goes wrong with having an uh, with a. <laughs> nothing really goes wrong with having a poster that's in a nice frame. Yep. Um, I think always does a good job on that. What were some of your ideas for nerdy for nerdy collectibles? Well, I was going to take you into a to a slightly different place. Um, one of your nerdy collectibles, um, I frequently do um, the surprise bag. Oh, yes. Um, the surprise ball for, for my nieces. Yeah, surprise ball for the, for, for the nieces, which is which I literally buy a bunch of little stuff and get a, a couple things of saran wrap and, and, um, and build this ball where every couple of layers of saran wrap, there's another nerdy, nerdy thing. Well, another little thing. It can be little Pokemon figures, um, little lip glosses, little, little, it's all little stuff that's under like $3 and under. Yeah. Um, and it has a lot of surprise bags in it because the girls are into surprise bags, Shopkins and, mm-hmm. and um, My Little Pony. Oh, yes. Which, definitely. you know, if you have a brony, there mm-hmm. you go. Um, I frequently will do... Um, surprise bags for um lego figures and there's bunches of them out there like you can get these are the blind bags um, yeah blind bags yeah i'm sorry i'm using the wrong term blind bags um that are lego figures and you can get them there's a series of them in in dc and marvel star wars are out there star wars are out there um and it's kind of fun as you're opening stockings to open it up and see what you got put Mm -hmm. it together um so that those are kind of a a fun little thing that you can do pretty pretty easily and they come in like you can get um nba figures you can get wrestling figures all sorts of all oh, sorts yeah. of things in in blind bags um and that's kind of that's kind of fun oh yeah no, i know i i know some people who sell entire lots of it you know like the, the entire box lot lot of it that you would normally then open up as a display case to sell to other people they just sell the entire thing well, and and there's actually sites you can go to that give you the the um, numbers, mm-hmm. and you can find um, so the you, figure that you want. Where where to you, it's not a it's not a blind. It's, so so the other the other fun one here is that they that um, what short what store owners might do as well is they might have um, when they get like a blind a box of that, and they have like very popular characters there that they know will sell for much more than the original market price of that. You can actually kind of figure out the weight of them. Oh, well, there's a, there's some sort of ID, ID number on the bag that'll tell you who it is. Some there of them. There's sites on, yeah, yeah at least some on of, some of them. Some of them will. And then, then, and then also on eBay, if you wanted a particular one. Yeah, somebody's, somebody's opened it already. And somebody's opened it, it already and, and uh, will sell you that particular one for a premium. Yes, typically a premium. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no blind bo- blind blind bags or blind blind boxes are, are certainly a cool element as well, especially if it's in a um, series or a franchise that somebody really really enjoys. Um, and especially if there's the chance of getting the, the character that they want out of it, because they'll they'll usually list all the, uh, a, the all the characters that will can show up on there. Yeah, but I mean, chances. I mean, like, like I did a whole whole bunch of surprise ones when when Frozen first came out because I could recite every word from Frozen. I really can't. Oh yeah. Um, so when Frozen came out, I, I one Christmas I did just a whole bunch of blind bag Frozens. We have so many trolls. Mm-hmm. Out of the whole thing, no Anna's, one Elsa, a couple Svens, a Kristoff, and lots of trolls. Yeah. Yeah, somebody like, somebody like, did that on purpose to you. Yeah, and and no no monster, just a bunch of trolls. <laughs> so 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 just be forewarned. Yeah, you might get trolled, um, and, and stuff. But figuratively, yes. Yeah, figuratively, yes. And um, 
but I like I like I always I almost always have have some sort of um, blind thing in it. The other thing is that this year. Um, it's the first time I've noticed it, but it might have been true before. Lego has a bunch of figures as well. Yes. So they have, and they're they're nine ten dollars. They're not real expensive. Um, there's Mario Brothers. There are a number of, of uh, yeah. So Mario is a more recent acquisition, I think, within just this last year, as far as Lego goes. Um, but no, yeah. So there's a lot of Lego just figurines as well. Um, again, Lego, and they're been, and they're actually figurines. We're not talking about the little guys. No, they, we're talking like, um, oh, you're talking about the little brick figures. Yeah, the brick figures. Um, so yeah, so Lego has a series of um, kind of like brick figures. Um, I have one of Thanos over on my computer. Oh, I see him. Yeah. 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 Um, and so they're all kind of like these little kind of bricky sort of figurish looking guys. But they're but they're they're about. Four inches, five inches, uh, two or three, about two and a half, three inches, give or take. Okay, okay. Um, all right. but they're all made out of Lego, and they all have, and you know, so you can get them in like Ninja Turtles, uh, Darth Vader, like there's a whole bunch of little uh, brick characters here. Okay, so just a second. I do kind of. Do kind of uh, well, just we we're both we're both sitting here searching, which it makes for really interesting podcasting, isn't it? Okay, so I'm looking at the Super Mario uh, character pack on Lego, and these these are four ninety nine a piece. So they're called Brickheads with a Z. Okay, so they these are these are these are really cute. Okay, so these are these are the little character packs, which are different than what what we're talking about. Yeah, I was talking about those. And those are those are how tall? So these are brick heads. They're probably about maybe two to three inches tall each. And They're they, really cute. Yeah, and they come and they in, come, in, come in all sorts of. Oh yeah. There's there's, there's uh, Iron so Man. Bunch, so you have a bunch of DC characters here. They've got uh, Beauty and the Beasts as well. Is there uh, a Captain Marvel? I don't um, remember. Probably is. Uh, this this just, just this is a website that just kind of showed when they Chris, first got Chris, started. Christmas is coming. Um, just saying. <laughs> Um, yeah, so there's there's so there's all sorts of and, and uh, Mega Bloks came out with Pokemon. So they they have a Pokemon um, characters. Um, so they have just actual Pokemon that you could build in various uh, sizes. Um, oh, they have a Baby Yoda one. A Baby Yoda with the Mandalorian. Ha ha. And I like that the website. Okay, and that, now that's twenty, so that might be a little bit bigger. But it's a, but it's a two pack. It's a two pack. Okay. Yeah. So in this case yeah, here, there there's, a, there's a two pack of them, um, but they're typically about like ten bucks each. I want to say. Okay. Um, yeah, so they're about ten dollars each, give or take. They're not terribly expensive at all. Um, oh, there you go. Oh, they do have one. Oh, she's cute. And the flurkin. And 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 the flurkin. Where's the flurkin? <gasps> oh, I love the flicking. Okay. Yeah. Just saying, Christmas is coming. I think that might be... Yeah, I might I might be able to find one of those somewhere. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so they have a couple different kind of options out there for, for these at the end of the day, which I think is actually pretty neat, um, you know, because, again, I mean, like... It's kind it, of a different gift. It's a different gift. They're kind of small, but they're perfectly uh, nerdy at the end of the day, too. Yeah. I think I think they're excellent ideas. My last my last one was was I noticed when I was um, fooling around on on eBay and looking at stuff that there are a number of people out there with unpainted what they refer to as garage kits. Okay, yeah. For anime figures. Yep. All if right. you had somebody and and these look like pretty detailed figures. I mean the the one the one I'm showing you right here um, has you know uh, a lot of detail to her. Ah, Ray Ayanami. Yeah, so um, so what originally started out, uh, so Gunpla actually in and of itself started out as what, what they called garage kits. Um, and what a garage kit essentially is is that um, this is a person who has created a created a statuesque figurine at the end of the day, um, but then broken it up into pieces to make it easier to ship at the end of the day. And they're unpainted. Um, cause a lot of the work, um, when you go into these figurines is sometimes just painting them on your own. Um, 
but a lot of it is also just kind of. It's a lot of very fine detail painting, by the oh, way. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Should, be a lot of very f- yeah, very a lot of fine detail printing, uh, painting a lot. Oh, of... there's all sorts of a. Oh yeah, no garage kits are a, are, are a big thing in Japan. In all sorts of uh, characters, Huck and Anger. We don't know who Huck is. Not sure either. Yeah. Um, no, garage kits are a very popular element. Um, when we were in Akihabara, there was literally a part, uh, there was literally a parts store. That's what that made j- me look for, for them. Cause it, we saw that. Yeah. That there was just parts. So like hands, rods, arms that you could, you know, sw- swap out if you wanted to have a character say, okay, some of these are anatomically correct. Of course, some of these are anatomically correct. Unfortunately, I'm just saying, yeah. Um, but you know, there's 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 Batman, there's everybody. So these are unassembled garage kits. They're resin. Um, so yeah. So what I should, what I should say is that these are um, somebody's made a mold for them and they've injected, they've gotten a resin molding for it. Um, sometimes they're hollow, sometimes they're not. Um, and so they they typically come in like a gray or a are, a yeah. beige, maybe skin color in like some cases. Prime. Yeah, um, and typically what you do is you put is that you paint them and then and put it together to make um, to make these very highly detailed sort of figurines at the end of the day. Um, it's just that a lot of these are very kind of um, not underground is the best way to put it here, but they're mostly off the beaten path would probably be the better way to say that. Um, but a lot of this is where you would also just get characters that you would probably never find um elsewhere at all that you would that that would never well, otherwise the fact, the fact that you could paint it yourself would allow you there are pages of them mm-hmm. um uh would allow you to maybe make it in what in in like a different color or make it sort of uniquely yours right yeah you can make it uniquely yours if you wanted to um so if you wanted to have a character that instead of you know if instead of you don't like this particular shade of blue on this character you can make it richer or deeper or if you had um, a particular uh, look that you wanted to have for the character, or maybe this was a um, maybe you were trying to do like I've seen uh, like I've seen a lot of people who make uh, Gundam models who redo the entire paint scheme of the Gundam. So instead yeah, of it that's being what like, I'm a, thinking. like instead of like a white and blue, I've seen like a like a weird camouflage sort of look, or a kind of like a or they've been dressed up to look like Pokemon in some cases. Um, there's an artist out there who actually did um, Gundam models. But re-inspired as Marvel superheroes. Oh, that would be pretty cool. So yeah, so you Iron had, Man would be would be yeah, but they had like a Captain Marvel that was like a very a, a different Gundam that like is the entire frame of the of the Gundam was painted to look like Captain America at the end of the day, or or Captain Marvel. Um, literally, one of my favorite Gundams literally looks like Sailor Moon, which That'd is a little a little cute. cheesy. Yeah, but but it's an official Gundam at the end of the day. So, um, and it looks like a, it looks like a girl in a sailor outfit. That's pretty cute. Yeah. Um, so there's stuff like that. So garage kits are kind of a fun way. Um, if you wanted to have a lot more control and you're a little more artsy about your figurines. Um, cause again, yeah, like that's, that's one of those, the, one of those ones in which like an airbrush and a very fine, um, fine brushwork would be very rewarding for somebody to put one of those together. Um, definitely a good option at the end of the day, if you like, uh, if you're create if you're of the creative type on there, yeah, it just looked like like something that would be um, a little bit different. They have Pokemon. I bet, I bet. I mean, it looks like they have a little bit of everything. Oh, that's really cute. All the Eevees. All the Eevees. That and, is really cute. And again, you could again fifty two dollars for the set here is not a bad price it, here at the end of the day. It's not at all. And and again, I mean, you get all the different little Eevees to. To paint and all do the up. evolutions. You know who who uh, who loves Evie? Oh, my niece. Yeah, I know she does. Yeah, we have a whole book in which you find Evie and all these different. Uh, well, places. I got well, I got her an Evie for Christmas one year, yeah. or for either for her birthday or for Christmas because it's around the same time. She likes Mewtwo too. Yes, yeah. she likes she likes the expensive Pokemon. Yeah, she's got good taste. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah, those were some of our suggestions for nerdy nerdy collectibles to to get out there. We're gonna put. Um, I have a whole collection of links and 
stuff that we'll put online at our website, the nerd tutorial podcast.com. Um, so you can see what a lot of these look like. Cause again, we're talking about it as a podcast. Um, and you're probably wondering what, if you've never heard of what a zoom zoom looks like, you may not even really know what the spelling is for a zoom zoom or an yeah. Android or any of that. So I, we're going to put links to where you can find some of this stuff at, um, as well as plenty of pictures on the website. So that way you can follow along and see some of the stuff on there. We continue the conversation as well at, at our Facebook group at facebook.com forward, forward slash nerd tutorial podcast where I, this week I got to figure out what next week's topic is so I can tease it because I try yeah. to find neat little teasers um, for every new topic that we get to. Um, and then as well, if you have any ideas, suggestions, or you want to follow some of the topics we've been following um, previously on, on in previous uh, episodes, we have our Twitter page as well, which is nerd underscore tutorials. So if you want to follow some of the nerdy stuff I, I that we've what, talked about. I think a future topic might be just series that are available on Netflix. Uh, anime uh, series that are available on Netflix. Oh, okay. Because because there's quite a bit. Yeah, and there's, a, there's quite a bit on there for streaming as well. So maybe we do a streaming um, anime collection here in one of these days. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we can do that. Um, that's a good idea for next week, maybe. Going yep. into the Thanksgiving season, if you've got a long road trip coming on, what's a good series to watch? Yeah, especially if you've got holidays, you got time off. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, awesome. Okay. Yeah, i got some good ideas rolling in my head now. So, um, on behalf of my mom and myself here, we, we hope that you stay safe out there in these weird times. And we'll see you guys again next time. Bye. Bye.